What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Um, smash that like button, hit the subscribe, whatever, all that stuff. Uh, so, it's been a couple months actually since I got the ambulance. Uh, obviously things have been going very, very slowly. But uh, I just wanted to give you guys an update, uh, talk a little bit about all the stuff that I've been working on. Uh, I also find it really difficult to actually get stuff done while I'm filming, so I've been doing a lot of stuff just uh, kind of without the camera present. But uh, I tried to get a little bit of uh, footage here and there to kind of show you the process throughout the way. So we'll probably cut some of that into this video uh, so you can see a little bit of the, the steps made. So uh, just kind of going to update you on the, the steps, the, the kind of stage that we're at right now. Um, so first of all, the electrical system that will be running off the solar panels is probably about, I would say, 80% done. So basically what's been done so far is um, this little cabinet over here, uh, just behind the driver's seat. Uh, that's going to be the main electrical shed. Most of these uh, fixtures and, and com components are you know, already installed and wired up correctly. Uh, so basically we've got the four batteries. These are Lion Energy batteries, uh, so 100 amp hours each, 105 amp hours each. So that should give me about 420 amp hours of lithium ion battery. Those are all installed. I built this little uh, wooden housing to kind of hold them in place. Um, that's kind of bolted to the, the frame of the vehicle, so that's not going anywhere. Uh, and then down here at the bottom, we've got the inverter. And so the inverter is where we take the, the DC um, battery power from the panels and from the batteries and convert it over to AC, which is for the higher voltage stuff, such as you know your, your computer, your laptop, basically the regular 110, 120 volt uh, outlets. And that part I haven't really gotten into too much. Uh, I've got it kind of partially wired up, but I'm probably gonna bring in an electrician just to make sure that's done properly because again, you could really do some damage to yourself if you do this wrong, um, and I don't wanna do that. So, uh, moving on, I am, I've got two side mirrors installed now. I finally just pried off the other side mirrors. Um, so they look much better, they're much bigger. The only problem is that, as you saw in an earlier video, they arrived kind of, one of them arrived kind of busted. I did try out a little bit of custom wrapping on the door here, and as you can see, I kind of messed it up. <laughs> Turns out it's a lot harder than it looks, especially on a big flat surface like this. I kind of suspect it like a smaller, more organic area, like around a bumper or something. Might even be easier because you get to, you know, pull it taut around the curves and around the different shapes. Um, but yeah, this big flat surface was pretty tricky to get it all in. Also, the, the paint on the ambulance is so old that it kind of flakes a bit. So every time you pull it up to reset it, you, you get these like little bits of paint chip, which create little bubbles that you just can't get rid of. Um, so that was an issue. And then I overstretched it in some places and I understretched it in some places and then the, the back. Anyway, it was a learning process. So it was really just an experiment to see how easy it was. The answer is not that easy. So yeah, other notes on the inside. Um, as you can see, we've started to get the chair and the floor pulled up. Um, I've got three of the four bolts out. I had a neighbor come over and help me with this because these bolts were so stuck. And in fact, one of the bolts is still, uh, we just can't get it out. So we are, we're thinking about how to do that. Um, this is a seat belted seat, so it's kind of bolted to the vehicle's frame and that bolt is in there real tight, so uh, But yeah, so this uh, little battery monitor just perfectly happened to fit in one of these vent holes So um, so yeah, this little thing here is wired up to the batteries uh, to the battery shunt And so it can kind of give you a good uh, visual indicator of your battery levels I haven't switched anything on I haven't set them up in the Bluetooth app or anything um, but it's nice to have this inside the vehicle giving me some information about what's going on in my in my battery shed. Um, yeah, and so all of this texture that you see, like the original ambulance uh, veneer that they have, I'm probably just gonna either paint over this uh, to give it like a fresh look, or I might attach a like a wood veneer, like a wooden cabinet veneer or something, just to give it a, a bit of a different color look. And as you can see, I've started to pry it off of the metal uh, wall in other places where I can. Yeah, so that whole cabinet needs to come out. Uh, so yeah, I'm slowly working on that. 
This cabinet, as you can see, it's already got a very jagged cut made. Uh, I need to figure out how I'm gonna cut it across the top. I also need to not cut any wires. And then I need to figure out how to cut it kind of along this seam here. But yeah, this little, this little box is coming out. Um, I might even put a hole into this one from this side and make an additional clothing storage cabinet accessible from inside, uh, from out here, because I don't think I'll need that much vertical space from outside. Once all of this stuff is out completely, like all of this is out, this cabinet, these metal pieces, that cabinet, I'm gonna properly measure everything in here, do a 3D model, and start really finalizing the design and layout using the final measurements of everything because my initial design was kind of just rough based on the you know total length by total width and that was it uh, so it didn't factor in any of the you know the angled struts here the little differences in you know depth for these different cabinets and didn't factor in any of these cabinets here so make a new model um, kind of get all the design ideas finalized um, and yeah, that should help. But in the meantime, I am also gonna just start on the flooring because the flooring is pretty straightforward. So this has gotta come out, even though it is very nice and I wanna find a way to reuse some of it. So this is all gonna come out. As you can see, there's plywood and horribleness under there. So I have a floor underlayment roll that I've ordered, as well as some tape to seal up the seams. Wherever you see this black stuff, I'm gonna replace it with that underlayment. And then I'm gonna put a uh, vinyl, uh, kind of faux wood panels, which are fully waterproof and everything, across the whole thing. I can't really finalize the ceiling until I get the wiring uh, a little bit further progressed, but I have ordered the stuff that I need to do it. Uh, I forgot to mention before that I started pulling out the uh, internals from this exterior cabinet. So first I pulled off all the carpeting that was lining all of this, which leaves me with this horrible glue residue everywhere. Then I pulled out these two um, metal slats. I think this is where they kept the gurneys, uh, stretchers, you know, that kind of stuff um, in these vertical slots. So pulled all the carpet out of there, pulled these two metal bits out, and I am starting to cut out the bit of this cabinet that needs to come out. It's kind of awkward to work in here. I broke one of my jigsaw blades already. The jigsaw goes through this stuff like butter, frankly. Um, but some of the angles are kind of weird. So I'll have the shower water cabinet on the other side. We'll have the drinking water cabinet on this side. Might even be able to fit the water heater in here to save space under the sink. So I do have a an order in for a custom window to replace the one that I stupidly broke. Um, and so I'm still waiting to get an exact quote, but it's looking to be around $450, maybe more for the slider version, but we'll see how expensive it ends up being. But yeah, that's an unfortunate mistake. Um, uh, I haven't got the vehicle registered yet because now the DMV says it makes more sense to just register it as an RV once the conversion is done. Otherwise I would have to register because of its weight in New York State as a commercial vehicle and then re-register it as an RV later, which might mess with the insurance. Either way, it's confusing, it's complicated. Um, so basically, it's been two months since I purchased this thing. I've barely done anything on it. I've just put the two mirrors on, started the electrical system and pulled out some of the internal guts. That's all I've done in like two months. So it's been very slow going. Uh, I have been distracted by a bunch of other projects, but uh, it is what it is. And um, yeah, so that on my six month timeline, that gives me four months left. So I, uh, I better pick up the pace a little bit if I want to get this done. Also, of course, winter's coming, as, uh, as they say in the north, and it's going to be really miserable working on this outside in the, in the freezing weather. So it'd be nice to start getting it insulated at the very least. <laughs>
So here's the vehicle wrap. As you can see, it's got this nice satin finish. It's really smooth, I really like it. Um, there's a couple little bubbles in there that I couldn't get rid of, a couple little folds and seams and scratches. Again, you know, this is just the second time I've ever done this. Um, but in general, it looks pretty good. And uh, I like the color a lot. It contrasts nicely with the kind of uh, bed liner matte black. So we got this kind of satin blue gray. So I think I'm gonna use this wrap on the rest of the front of the cab once I get all these little holes patched up. Uh, so today we're gonna be painting uh, one of the sides of the ambulance just as an experiment. So basically learning how to get the paint on, how to get it to stick. Um, and this is really just a test for the rest of the box to see if it works out well. Uh, and then the other thing we're gonna be doing today is uh, getting the bed installed. Maybe not today, over the next few days. So uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's get started with some painting and then we'll move on into working on the hanging bed. So enjoy. And here's the update on the interior. So I got the flooring up. I patched this rotten spot in the floor. I've got my uh, floor panels in, just waiting for the bed, the uh, vapor barrier to come in. And I need to figure out how to get out these two metal uh, mounting bracket things. They are really stuck in there. I can't figure out how to get them out. And then a cool process that we just finished is uh, getting the bed lift system attached to the vehicle frame. Now it still needs a bit of work. I'm gonna need to custom mod the bed a bit. Uh, one of the problems that I'm having right now is that when the bed, when it uh, twists and wraps up, uh, the cables don't nicely come this way. They kind of get jammed up this way because when the cable comes down, it's actually coming down at an angle. Right now, because of the framing of the bed, it can't be mounted properly. So I think the next step that we're gonna have to do is modify our bed frame a little bit to give it a little bit more structural rigidity and also give us a different place to mount these cables to rather than just hanging off the top. All right, here's the tour of the uh, finished work. So these plates are kind of just uh, loosely held on uh, to these corners. It's, when I say loose, I mean very loose. You can see how thin this piece of wood is here. Um, I've used these kind of screws, stainless steel, with a square bit, just because they're a little bit more elegant and this will be uh, visible from the outside. I'm gonna stain this later, but I've got it nice and sanded already. Um, so these four really are just holding it in place. What's gonna give this some strength is there's gonna be a hole through this. So on the inside, it'll have a bolt. So it'll be bolted in. So it'll be kind of squeezing uh, this whole structure between these two pieces of wood. And so really that's where this thing is getting its strength. It's gonna be from this big heavy duty, you know, hundreds of pounds bolt. And the exterior of the bolt will be an eye, just like this. So that's where, where the uh, bed will be able to be hooked from. So we've got one of these in each of the corners. This is now much more sturdy here. Uh, I tested it out, I actually can sit on it, no problem. And same thing on the other side. So as you can see, I kind of just notched the corner just to allow me to get those two little screws uh, angled in. And those two black screws there are at an angle kind of pointing that way towards the wood frame because again, there's so much hollow space inside this fabric. And then everywhere where there is a vertical uh, stud inside the hollow fabric frame, I've got one of these giant big bolt screws going through the wood and into the fiberboard underneath. And again, it's really just to give it some strength and uh, so far it seems to be working out quite nicely. And then finally, we scavenged this IKEA uh, bed frame and this is 
the uh, the mid beam, right? This way I don't have to worry about the middle of the bed giving out without support. So I've now got three added supports here. These are also, these are just literally resting in here. There's no kind of, it's not attached, um, but this thing, this little wood block is again bolted to the midpoint there. And those are heavy duty bolts. So that should hold. And again, once this whole thing is done, this entire end here and that entire end there will sit flush, flat on the couch tops just the way they're sitting on these folding tables now. Now my couch is gonna be even more sturdy than these folding tables, but just sitting on it right now, you can already, you can already feel how much more rigid it is. So that should do it. So I've got the bed upgrade done. Now I need to get it back into the vehicle and uh, find out exactly where these things need to be mounted so that it, um, you know, goes up and down more smoothly. So let's get to that.